In my opinion, dry shade is one of the absolute hardest conditions to deal with as a gardener because plants need light and plants need water to survive. So in this video, I've compiled a list of some of my favorite plants for dry shade. My name is Amy and over at Pretty Purple Door, I help home gardeners design landscapes that are uniquely you. I'm gonna remove my face from the screen so you can get a full photo of each of the plants and I'm not blocking anything on you. So let's get right into this list. My first pick for dry shade plants is this variegated Solomon seal. It has arching stems adorned with these fragrant white bell-shaped flowers in the spring and beautiful white and green striped variegated foliage. This is a spreading shade plant and it's really low maintenance and really adaptable and it's not aggressively spreading or anything like that. It also thrives in both dry and wet soil conditions. So if you have a garden that has a mixture of dry and wet soil conditions, this is a great plant to use as a ground cover. It's also fairly disease and deer resistant and cold hardy to zone three. So actually very cold hardy. They prefer full shade in the hot summers and part shade in cooler climates. And as an extra bonus, it has these blue black colored berries in the fall, which adds another extra season of interest while also attracting wildlife. This particular variety is native to China, Korea, and Japan, but there's also a variety P by Florum that's native to Eastern North America that works in the same conditions as this one if you wanna check out the native variety. This is mountain mint and it's an awesome perennial plant that thrives in zones three through nine. It's got a compact size of only about two to three feet high and 12 to 18 inches wide. So it's a perfect fit for smaller gardens in the shade. It has blue and white blooms. They're mostly white with these little speckles of purpley blue in them. And they bloom in the summer and attract a ton of different pollinators, bees and butterflies. It's easy to care for and it adds a fresh minty aroma to your outdoor space. It's native range is North America in general, so it's well suited for a lot of different climates and a lot of different situations, and I find that it does do pretty well in dry shade. This is Frost Kiss Moon Dance Lenten Rose or Hellebore, and it's a perennial known for its elegant, creamy, almost green and white blooms that appear very, very early in spring. So this blooms early spring, like before anything else, almost late winter, I'd say. Emerging amidst the dark green marbled foliage of the plant, the flowers will gradually transition from a white to a soft green hue. The plant's unique feature lies in the silver veined leaves, which adds extra visual interest throughout the growing season and even after bloom. Hellebores in general serve as an important nectar source for pollinators in early spring because there's not much else blooming and it's resilient. It thrives in partial to full shade and dry shade, all different conditions. It's got resistance to deer, low maintenance, and hellebores always remind me of the promise of warmer days ahead. This is Mediterranean Spurge, which is an evergreen shrub. It's native to the Mediterranean region and it typically grows three to four feet tall and wide. It typically grows in an upright manner and it forms dense clumps with spirally arranged blue-green foliage. The foliage is really interesting on these. In spring, it produces clusters of these bottle brush, almost like chartreuse or lime green flowers atop the tall stems. It attracts butterflies and hummingbirds. Mediterranean Spurge makes a perfect focal point. It's a really lovely addition to rock and gravel gardens or Mediterranean style gardens in general. It's resilient to most pests and diseases, deer and rabbit resistance, and generally low maintenance. It likes full sun, but it can take part shade. And because it thrives in dry to medium well-drained soils, that's why it made this list for dry shade plant. And while it's drought tolerant, it does appreciate some moisture in very, very dry heat. Just make sure that you wear gloves when you're handling this as the stems and the leaves of Mediterranean Spurge actually contain a poisonous milky sap. And if that gets on your skin, it's not fun. So make sure you wear gloves when you're handling this. This is the beautiful New Zealand iris. It's an upright evergreen clumper, three feet high, two feet wide, with great sculptural qualities. Clusters of white flowers in May through June are graceful, and it stands above these long, leathery, strappy leaves that you'd typically see in any iris. The leaves take on a fantastic copper burnish during the colder months, so that adds even more to the seasonal appeal, even when it's not blooming, it's kind of changing colors. It likes a rich, well-drained soil in general, and a warm sunny position, but it can also take dry shade in hot climates. So if you're in a warmer climate and you're looking for a dry shade solution, try this New Zealand iris out and let me know how you fare.
And while I love sharing these lists of beautiful plants with you, my real expertise is actually in garden design and I do have courses and training. So I just wanted to share with you that I do have a free training. It's about an hour long. It's called Three Gardening Secrets Revealed. And this goes over the top three mistakes that I see home gardeners making that kind of prevent them from putting together a really unique and beautiful space. So if you want to check out that training, it's going to give you a little bit more structure as to what to do with all of these beautiful lists of plants and how to sort them out in your own garden. So I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below and I hope to see you over in that free training. Next up we have golden male fern and this is a semi evergreen fern with finely cut arching fronds that are yellowish green in color and they have this contrasting brown scaly stem so you can see it in the picture kind of how that contrasts with the foliage of the plant. It performs best in part shade or full shade. It likes actually moist and well drained soils so it can tolerate full sun with adequate moisture or it can actually tolerate drier conditions once it's established with adequate shade. So again uh, does well in drier conditions with adequate shade but while it's getting established it will need that moisture and you'll have to probably supplement water as it's getting established. It's very adaptable and versatile because it grows in all these different conditions. It's virtually pest and disease free, low maintenance, makes a really nice solitary specimen. It's got a nice size to it at three to four high and three to four wide so you can plant it as a focal point. Or you could also do a really nice mass planting of this in a woodland shade garden just to cover some space. The golden male fern does not spread at the root and it's really tough, but you don't have to worry about this one spreading like an ostrich fern, for example. This is maple leaf viburnum, and it's actually a deciduous shrub native to Eastern North America. It produces clusters of tiny white flowers from spring to summer, and it's followed by red berries that ripen to almost a blue black color. Really, really beautiful shrub. Maple leaf viburnum grows to like a medium size, three to six feet high and two to four feet wide. It prefers part shade and well-drained acidic soil, but it's also very adaptable to different soil types. So you don't really need acidic soil. It's also known to tolerate moist and drier shade areas. So very, very adaptable. This is a great shrub for almost any area in your landscape. It also provides nesting and escape cover for birds and small mammals. So it's a very valuable native addition to woodland gardens where you're looking to create habitat for wildlife. I really love maple leaf viburnum. It's definitely an awesome, awesome plant. Fairy Wings Dark Beauty features brilliant purple and white bicolor flowers. They emerge from this dark chocolatey purple foliage in the spring. It gives off a lightly fragrant scent. It's almost like a citrus-like scent, and that happens only in the afternoon. Very unique and interesting. It's very compact. It only reaches about one foot high, so it's a great option to tuck into those difficult areas of your garden, even if they are dry shade. It thrives and parts on to light shade, and it's also deer resistant. So definitely check out Fairy Wings Dark Beauty. Here we have long bracked Trillium, and this is a stunning Southeast US native Trillium from forests of the deep south. So despite this range, it's also winter hardy to zone six. So even though it's native in the Southern United States, actually us Northerners can grow it too. It's got this very unique mottled foliage that features dark medium and light green checkered board pattern or little spots on it with a silver streak down the center of each leaf. It's just really, really interesting to look at. It emerges in February and March and the leaves are topped with a single dark purple flower that contrasts really, really nicely with the foliage. You can see the interesting dark purple flower in the photo on the screen here. Next up is Mayapple Spotty Dotty, and this is a perennial with drooping maroon red flowers that bloom in spring, like April to May where I live in Northeast PA. These flowers are actually very showy, as you can see in the picture here, but they are usually underneath the foliage, so you would have to lift up the leaves to see these beautiful flowers. It grows in part shade to full shade, and it likes well-drained acidic soil, but it's pretty adaptable. It can tolerate moist or a bit drier conditions, so a really a go-to plant for a lot of different conditions in your garden. Mayapple features large tropical looking umbrella shaped leaves with brown spotting that can change from yellowish green to green with lighter spotting by summer. 
Uh, so a very, very interesting plant. Got a lot of different colors going on here. The fruit is known as mayapples, which is where it gets its name. And this consists of small clusters of grape-sized berries containing multiple seeds in each. They say the fully ripe fruit can be used in jellies and drinks, but the rest of the plant and the unripe fruit is actually poisonous. So do plenty and plenty and plenty of research before you try harvesting anything from a mayapple. And they typically have no serious disease or insects problems, but make sure you protect it from spring frosts. And if you have poorly draining soil or clay soil, it can get root rot. So just try to make sure that you're planting it in an appropriate area where it's not going to be sitting in water. Next up is Christmas fern, and this is native to Eastern North America. Christmas fern occurs in both dry and moist wooded slopes, moist banks, and ravines. So very adaptable to different conditions, including the dry shade. It prefers dappled shade and grows in an asymmetrical fountain-like clump. And it features these leathery, lance-shaped evergreen fronds, what you would see in most ferns. And they have a fine texture, and it's got a really dense crown to it. It is also evergreen, so it's green at Christmas time, which is what the name suggests, Christmas fern. So it's a great plant for winter interest in the landscape. If you're not so keen on evergreen shrubs, maybe an evergreen fern is a great choice for you. This fern does not spread, but the clumps do increase in size over time. So it's not a spreading fern, but it will get larger. And they also serve as a host for butterfly larvae. So it's a great native plant. And I highly recommend checking out Christmas fern for your dry shade area. Next up, we have black scallop bugleweed, or many people call it a juga. This is a perennial plant with dark purple, almost black foliage that forms a thick mat on the ground. It produces tiny spikes of these deep lavender flowers in the spring, which have like a really dramatic contrast between the very dark foliage and the very intensely purpley blue color. It's just really, really beautiful. I have this all over my garden. It's ideal to use between stepping stones or as a ground cover in garden beds. And while I wouldn't recommend it for a high traffic path or something that you're stepping on it all the time, I do step on it when I'm maintaining my garden and it seems to bounce back just fine. So some light foot traffic would be fine. It does well in a wide range of conditions, including the dry shade that we are talking about in this video. It's also deer and rabbit resistant. Just make sure that you do some research on this because it is a ground cover and it will spread in your garden. So um, I know that in some warmer climates, it may get a little bit more aggressive. I'm in zone 7A and it's totally fine here, especially in the shade, but maybe if you have a more sunny area and it's a little bit warmer, uh, you may wanna look into it a little bit more and see if it's a good option for you or not. And here's just a list of native perennials for dry shade. Some I covered in this video and some I didn't have the chance to cover. So feel free to pause the video, take a photo of this list. I'm also gonna leave it in the description below for any of you native plant lovers. I know there's a lot of you following me that are really, really interested in native plant gardening. So definitely take a look at this list. I'm going to leave links in the description below of all the plants that I mentioned in this video, but I know that dry shade is a really difficult situation for many gardeners. So if you do have any tips or any plant suggestions for others, please leave those in the comments below. And if you like this video, please check out my video about foliage plants for shade. There are some for wet and dry shade in that video, and I'm gonna leave a link to it right here. I'll see you over there.